We appreciate you taking time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always emanating from our outstanding studios. And man, you made a good move because linebacker coach James Betcher is our guest. This guy was one of the youngest defensive coordinators in the National Football League when he was coordinating with the Arizona Cardinals and then the New York Giants. He and Lou Anarumo have a connection. They've they've coached together prior to their time here in Cincinnati. And Betch, as he's fondly known, is a football guy. I mean, he understands his football. And he has a group of very, very high IQ, football IQ players at the linebacker position. And man, the synergy between Coach James Betcher and that linebacker group is phenomenal. And he's not only teaching them about football, he's teaching them about life. And we're going to get a dose of that as well. You're going to like what linebacker coach James Betcher has to say. Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're here in our studios trying to get it done. And we've got a very special guest today. From his offices down in Paycor Stadium, linebacker coach James Betcher. Coach, great to have you, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. You're a uh, you're a football lifer. I mean, it's it. How were you one of the youngest defensive coordinators in the National Football League when you were a coordinator with the Arizona Cardinals and the New York Giants? I mean, you got to a defensive coordinator very very early in your professional coaching career. Yeah, I was I was blessed with some being around some people that believe in you and, and, you know, there's a lot of people that are probably watching can relate and whatever you do, you, you know, do a great job of the job you got. That's number one. And number two, when you align yourself and you're around people that believe in you and give you opportunities to grow and um, to do, you know, that's, that's what I, that's what I had. You know, it was Bruce Arians who believed in me that initial first time. Right. When he brought me to Arizona and told me, you know, just do a great job of the job you got. Then, whatever's next for you will happen. And that's exactly what he said to me. And I was lucky to be around that man. Man, that's, he, he had a huge influence, uh, obviously in your, in your coaching life. What about, let's go to the way back machine, University of St. Francis, uh, your, your alma mater in Indiana, here you are back in the Midwest, but uh, you, you were a special teams coordinator, defensive line coach right out of the gate with your alma mater in your coaching career. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I worked for a man named Kevin Donnelly, and um, if you don't know his name, you should because he's one of the winningest all-time collegiate coaches in the history of the sport. Wow! At all levels, and um, amazing coach, amazing leader. Started the program there um, way back in um, 1998. He started the football program there, and um, started it. Wow! Yeah, having a chance to play for him as a player when he started the program, and eventually be on his coaching staff. Um, you know, coach, coach D was, is a fantastic uh, man. His players love him. He was always challenged you to get more out of yourself. You know, he has, he's got a book. He's, he, he does public speaking. He talks a lot about, um, your cup of potential and is your potential, does your cup overflow or is your cup half full? And like what impact you actually have as an individual, as a player, as someone at your job, the actual impact you have on what that potential looks like in your cup. You know, do you have a big cup? Do you have a small cup? And how what you do on a daily basis impacts um, what happens with your potential. And um, I think he, he left such a great, great impact on me. At, um, I always say this to other guys I'm around. Um, he made the, he would always make the statement. Um, it'll never be about your years of experience. It'll be about your experience in your years. So when you're in the moment, maximize the moment, get the most out of the moment, the experience, the, the little details of it, because that's what will matter. And I think when I became, you know, you brought it up when I became a coordinator at a young age, like I remembered that statement from him. Like I can do this job because it doesn't matter how many years it matters about the experiences I've been fortunate enough to have that have led up to this moment. And I tried early on, I learned that lesson from him in this, in this specific profession, but really in any profession, like when you start something, don't waste a day, 
Don't waste the moments. Learn, grow, experience. I try to share that with our players all the time. Um, I had some of our young players that stayed after with me yesterday for a little bit, and we talked about, like, now isn't the time for you to wait your turn. You don't wait your turn. You maximize your moment. Get better every day. Find things in your game you're trying to improve, and let's be ready when the moment comes, not get ready when the moment comes. And um, I think I was lucky to be at St. Francis and play for Coach Donnelly because that's something, you know, a life lesson I learned from him playing there. So it's pretty awesome to be home, though, Lap, you know. Right. I hear you. Coach, I'm telling you, man, you're, you're the type of coach. Um, Paul Brown was my first head coach with the Bengals. Uh, legend, obviously. You know, he founded the Cincinnati, founded the Cleveland Browns, founded the Cincinnati Bengals, whole yeah. nine yards. But when he got up and, and talked about life, you know, and, and maybe incorporating football into your life, not just football, man, it was mesmerizing. And you, you've got that talent, that ability. I mean, that I could hear you talk about, you know, how football uh, is is like a you know a, a smaller version of life in general. You know, I mean, it, it's 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 pretty amazing, and there are a lot of lessons to be learned there. And I, I bet your players, uh, I bet they come and talk to you about er anything and everything, don't they? Yeah, we you know I, I and I think like what we sometimes lose sight of is that. Um, oh, this is a sport. This is a game. But it's it, you just said it. It's so much more. It's it's life. And then we lose sight of in that like that. That's what our players are. They're they're humans or people. They have lives and they work every single day to be elite at what they do on the field. But they're also trying to be elite husbands, elite dads are trying to be elite brothers and sons and family members and co-workers with their teammates. Right. Like they're trying to do that as well. And um, they have to balance a lot and they have to be able to work all that out in the building to be great at their job when they go home and when they have their personal lives as well. And that's why I have so much respect for guys that play in this league is because of the pressures that are associated with playing. But also when they go home, they're trying to be great, just like all of us. You go home and you want to be a great dad. You want to be a great husband. I want to do the same things. And I think that's a lot of the common ground that you have with your players as you grow with your players. I mean, I'm still growing every day. I'm trying to grow and our players are trying to grow. and We grow together. And I think that's the common thing that you find no matter where you're from, no matter where they're from. I think that's something that we all have in common. So when you get into the coaching profession, you, you started out at uh, your alma mater, University of St. Francis. You coached at Bowling Green, North Carolina, Ball State, UNH, New Hampshire, uh, yep different stuff during that process were you i'm going to be i love the college level or were you thinking about professional level or did it just unfold and it just unfolded. I, I promise you when um i started at saint francis it was just about doing a good job at saint francis like, right. like my first job at saint francis as well as the d-line coach and coaching the special teams I had all the field maintenance. So I mowed all the lawns. I had to paint all the lines. And I, I tell this story to people like I had to line the soccer field for Coach Ken Newber, who was the head soccer coach at St. Francis at the time. And I had never lined no soccer field. I don't know about the line. So I got a book out there. I'm reading. And we didn't have some fancy machine that was going to paint straight lines. So I put this hand down in this machine and I pulled the trigger and I had to stake from one line to the next and I had to paint the line straight. And I remember the first time I was so nervous. So I go out, man, and I just, the best straight line I could paint, that's what was important to me. I wasn't thinking about coaching in the NFL. I was thinking about painting a straight line. There you go. And having the lines line up on the field. And I remember I get done with that. I was so proud. Like, because I thought, man, I got, this is by hand on the lines. It looks good. The soccer field's ready. They're ready to start like their fall camp. And and the soccer coach comes out and he is so mad at me. He's so mad at me because the way I had it oriented on the field wasn't square with how he wanted it to be oriented. And I was like, man, but I had straight lines. That's right. And, um, but that's just, that's just, and I wasn't, no, I was just worried about doing a good job. The yeah. job I had. And I just try along the way. That's, that's what we try to do. And at some point, somebody's going to recognize, Hey, this yeah. guy knows what he's doing. He's doing a hell of a job. And, and, and all of a sudden, uh, opportunity knocks, man. There's there's no question about it. When you were with the Arizona Cardinals, you, your your defenses never finished below seventh in the National Football League in total defense. I mean that 
that's something to be proud of. Yeah, I, and we had a an, an amazing run there, really, on defense. And I, I say that, and I say we. There was other coaches that had their hand in the pile. I mean, the players are the ones out getting the job done. And um, we had, we had, you know, uh, it's, it was the best three years in franchise history there on defense. And wow. we created a lot of touchdowns on defense, turnovers, field position, played good reds on defense, the things that are important, played good run defense, limited explosives in the pass game, you know, and, and most importantly, like I said, create turnovers. But that was just – that was a lot of hands in the pile, and it was an awesome um, – I was fortunate to have that experience as my first experience as a coordinator. And even as a young coach in the NFL, just that experience – so I think it, um, what I took out of it is, man, I know what it looks like now. You know, I know what real preparation is. I can share with my players in this meeting room, the linebackers in this meeting room, what preparation to be really good on defense looks like. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you from experience now, man, if we're going to be good against the run or we're going to be good in the red zone, or we're going to be good on first and second down limiting explosive passes, like here's the things that I know we have to do. And here's the things I know you have to do as an individual player. And I think um, as much as I'm proud of those moments, that's the biggest thing I take is the experience that I can share with players I'll get to coach, you know, hopefully for the rest of my career in this league. Well, as a defensive coordinator in the Big Apple, man, there's nothing like the Big Apple. I did experience it, played with the New Jersey Generals and the media and the attention and all the things that go go with the Big Apple. It's like, uh, take take any other market and force multiply it by I don't know I don't know what the uh, what the, yeah. what the variable would be but I mean that that's a crazy place is it is it crazy to coach in, in the yeah Apple? it's awesome it was an awesome place it really yeah. was um, did things go like we wanted no you know sometimes you have a plan and you work to execute your plan it doesn't go the way you had planned it to go right and um, it didn't and um, you know I failed I didn't get it done and um, I own that and. Um, we didn't get it done. And again, a great experience for me to be able to know how I can, what I can share from that experience with the players I coach today. When I went to San Francisco after New York, there's experiences from New York I was able to share with our players in San Francisco. Sure. San Francisco experiences I'm able to share here. And that's all the way around. You know, to your point, I remember uh, my first press conference in New York. Um, I stand up at the podium and there was probably, and I'm not even kidding, probably like 75 or 80 members in the media. And my first one in Arizona, no offense. I mean, there was just like 10 people, you know, cause that's right. just, the markets are different. You said it, it's just what it is. Right. right. And, um, so yeah, it was very different that way. And, um, it was an awesome place though. The Mayor and Tish families are awesome. And, um, you know, that's just obviously one of the iconic franchises in our game. And, um, it was, it was a good experience to be there. You and uh, Bengals, current Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo served on staffs. I mean, you guys coached together. Yep. Um, and and it's almost like I bet you guys almost finish each other's sentences now. I mean, is it like you guys are on the same page where it's it's crazy when you're uh, doing prep during the course of the week? Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's it's I love coming to work. I love coming to work because of what I do, but I love coming to work to work with that man. I and mean, he is an awesome coach. He's a, uh, an awesome man, and um, he does such a good job of, like, just behind the scenes, communicating with people, behind the scenes, you know, working things out, trying to get it right. Um, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. I mean, he's an awesome leader, and, um, you know, I knew that when I was working with him in New York. It was just it, we had a little thing we wrote down on a piece of paper, each of our goals in the, in the near term. And, you know, like it was only moments before that was going to happen for him. And it did happen after, you know, a very short time together there. And um, the next thing will happen the same way for him, you know, because he's cut from the, the right cloth. He's made of all the right things. And ultimately, one of the most important things besides X and O's, which are, you know, a little overrated, like his – his able to to make it personal with players, his a- ability to challenge his players um, is is special. And, and that's what leaders do. You know, they're able to get it on a personal level. They're able to reach people. They're able to challenge people and they're able to pull the best out of them. And, you know, you've seen before I was here what he's been able to turn this into defensively, you know, and um, I know he won't he won't take that credit, but I'll give it to him. I tell you, he is. He's a special, special dude. There's no question, Coach. The uh, the continuity 
uh, of the coaching staff and the players. I mean, you know, the, this, this group's been together. This two-year run is as good as there's been in franchise history. There's no question about that. Back-to-back -back AFC North championships. If, if it happens again this year, it'll be the first time since the AFC North has been established in uh, 2002 that a team won three straight uh, AFC North titles. So, I mean, that's, that's some heady stuff. But the continuity and consistency of the coaches, you guys working together, you guys working with a lot of the same players and the, and the dialogue and communication back and forth on all levels, how special is that? No, it's, it's, it's unique and it's rare, and that's why there will be this level of sustained success here. That's why we can achieve that. Now, we got to go do it. Right. we got to perform. Yep. But we can do that because of that level of communication. I mean, this is the fifth place I've been in the National Football League. And when I tell you it's rare, it just is. It doesn't happen that way. You know, I, I love the communication that we're able to have with our ownership and the, the level of communication we're able to have with our personnel department. And, um, you know, we have a very, very special head coach. I'm not just saying that because I work for him. I'm saying that because I've been around head coaches in the National Football League. Right. And I'm, I'm he is he takes everything in stride and keeps our team very even and very level and when the moment comes for the right thing to be said coach says the right thing at the right time and he always nails it he nails it and um <clears throat> and his communication level with us on whether it's an expectation or whether what he wants out of something or what he sees that we need to do it's it's and it starts there right you you talked sure. about it starts with our ownership and our personnel and our head coach and to, to Lou, like that's what helps give you a chance to have that kind of sustained success. We got to go perform. We have to do those things on a play in play out basis. But um, I think if you don't have that lap, you don't, it's hard to have a chance in this league. I agree. I agree a hundred thousand percent. L let's talk about uh, your, your players coach. Um, the big five, the fabulous five. I mean, the, the core linebackers that you got, yeah. it, it's uh, it is a sp pretty special unit there. Let's, and, and to have, if you have like a three down linebacker, you got to consider yourself fortunate. You guys have like four or five. I mean, it's, it's crazy <laughs> how many three down linebackers you have guys that are capable. And, you know, like Logan Wilson was in the back end initially, you know, uh, in his collegiate days at Wyoming and, and, uh, and, and Jermaine Pratt was a safety, you know, at, at uh, Michigan State. So, I mean, it's like very, very fortunate in that regard. Let's let's talk about those two first. Logan Wilson, give us uh, Coach James Betcher's scouting report on Logan Wilson if you are if you're, have to make a presentation to somebody about him. Yes. You know, the, um, the first thing I'm going to say is uh, very smart, tireless worker, very detailed, very, very coachable someone you love to work with on a day out, day out, day in, day out basis. A guy that's a great teammate that behind the scenes is going to have conversations with, with guys on, Hey, here's how we see it. Do you see it like this? Hey, if this motion happens, we're going to give you this call. Like the, all the things that you have to do outside of just a meeting room where you're watching tape and going through plan and installation, the real conversations, which are player to player conversations. He's unbelievable at that. Hmm. Um, knows and is aware of what he needs to work on to ele continue to elevate his game. Um, you know, love, love working with Logan. He's, it's been awesome to be here. Hmm. I'll tell you, man, he is, he's a, uh, he's a unique guy. How, how about Jermaine Pratt? Did, did, this guy's yeah. got a football IQ, doesn't he? Um, just a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> it's, it's off the charts. It's, um, it is, you know, I used to, I had a uh, player named Rashad Johnson that played for me. He played for the Cardinals for like 10 years at safety. Yeah. He was a walk-on at Alabama, became a captain, uh, became an all-SEC player, like special player for me that I had. And I thought he was one of the smartest, but I thought I could never have a player that could re recognize what's going to happen before it happened better than Rashad. And I have one here in Jermaine. Like, wow. he's special that way like there's times on tape i'm like why are you going there that fast he's like well because it's this this and this i already know i'm right all right slow down just a little bit because wow. you beat the ball you know yeah. and, and 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 that's rare it's rare to have that and i think I, i've loved working with jermaine because he is so so 
detailed in his work. Like when we, and what I mean by that isn't just like when you're in the room, it's before he comes to the room, before he walks in the building, he already knows the five to six core questions that he needs answered because he's already watched the tape. He's already really dissected it. He's already really um, prepared himself for what that day unfolds, whether it's a first and second down day, a red zone day, a third, you know, whatever the day is, he's already had the preparation for that. And, Mm -hmm. um, and you might say, well, that's what everybody should do. But the thing is not everybody can watch it and take it all in and put it right here to that degree. Yep. We all probably work around people. You're like, man, that dude's got an amazing memory or wow. He's always seems to know and prepared. Well, it's not just a preparation. It's the ability to take what I prepare and soak it in. And it's part of like, I can actually do that within the framework of one to two seconds, Hmm. you know? And, um, Jermaine has over my time in the last year and a half, this guy has improved his game as much as anybody in our room. Uh, maybe anybody on our defense, I could just say that. Like he has gotten better and better and better and really worked hard at the things he knows and, and, and is in tune with. He's going to improve in his game to play at either um, even another level. And, um, you know, we're talking about those two together, I appreciate them so much because they both know they got more in the tank that they both had like career kind of years last year, but that's not, that's not the end of the road for them. That's not the pinnacle. The pinnacle is another year. Then the next year, it's going to be another year. The next year, it's going to be this. And then they have that mindset that the end of the race isn't the end of the race. Like they're going to go, you know, enjoy the end of a race and a win and all that stuff. But as soon as they walk out of that win, like what elite people do is they often think of like, oh, there's more I can get to. There's more I can chase. And that's kind of their mindsets of these two guys. If I can share that with them, like, and that's what I love is because they know there's more and they get to the end and it's a win and they're satisfied with the win, but they find more that they can raise their game to and more that they can chase. And, um, man, if you're a Bengals fan, you have to love those two guys. You have to. No, no doubt. I mean, as a former lineman in the league, it's, it's intimidating when you come to the line of scrimmage and the linebacker starts yelling out exactly what you're going to be doing he, because of his study and, you know, formationally or a tip or a tell, whatever the case. And they start yelling, you know, here. And it's like you, you look at your your buddy, you know, it's like, oh, what are we going to do now? You know, it's like, man, they're coming and, and they're right. You know, it's like they're not wrong. They're, they're right on it, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Those kind of guys would be like, oh, man, can we do something to maybe, you know, kind of get them off beat just a little bit here. They're, they're calling everything out. It's almost like they're listening to our huddle. It's crazy. Uh, what about uh, Akeem Davis Gaither coach? Uh, and, and another guy that, yeah. you know, is a three down linebacker for you. No, there's, there's no doubt. I, you know, when you look back to last season, the two games Akeem had to come in when we had injuries to either uh, Logan or Jermaine, Akeem comes in and plays and what does he have? He has double digit tackles and, just proves to you that he is a three down player. And, um, you know, we often talk on defense, man, we got to find a way to get him on the field, a little package here, a little package there. Like it's, right. that's, it's a good problem to have when you, when you write down your top players and he's one of those top players overall. And um, this is a guy that, you know, uh, App State plays linebacker, plays some safety early on. He's another transition guy that um, in the last year and a half, this guy has elevated his game. You know, Akeem, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he's a he's a coach's son. His, his dad's been a Division One coach, and um, yep. he's smart. He's intelligent. And that's the makeup of our room is that way. And it's pretty awesome as a coach when you're around those kind of guys because you better be on your A game every single day when you come in this meeting room because there's guys that, see all the details. I'm going to check the, you know, they're on it. Oh, there's a T cross. I dot it, whatever it is yeah. like in, in Akeem's all of that. So I'm, I've loved to see his growth over the last year and a half and how much better he keeps making himself. And um, I'm excited for him this year. I think this guy's going to, you know, I don't want to speak for special teams, but I think he's going to be elite teamer like he was the back half of last year. And um, there's going to be times he's going to come in the game and, and help change the game for us. He was down the stretch, man. He was a special teams. I mean, Maven. Whew. He 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 was he was big time. He was he was grading out really high on a on a game by game basis. What about Marcus Bailey, coach? You got a you got another one there that gets it right. Yeah, you know, Marcus is um, 
fits the same mold as I will say this, and you're going to be like, oh, he's saying this for every guy in the room. There's some guys you wouldn't say it about. Everyone that's in this room, they're smart. They're detailed. They work. They're prepared. Marcus comes in here, and he's as prepared as anyone. There is not a point in time which I had last year, and I know I won't this year, any issues if – Marcus is going in the game. We're going to operate just fine. He's going to go play and he's going to perform because he's prepared. And it's, it's sometimes hard for people outside to understand what it takes as a backup to be prepared. And, you know, as you, you know, you've seen your teammates probably have to do it like prepare as a backup. And when you don't get a lot of snaps during the course of the week and all of a sudden it's play five and someone tweaks an ankle and you have to go in the game and perform and know all the checks, all the adjustments, the tips and tendencies of the guys that got the reps during the week and their preparation, preparation of starters. This is a guy that can do that. Like he can do it with very little preparation in terms of physically preparing. He can do it all on a mental basis. And, um, you know, Marcus came into me like about a week and a half ago and we had just a good talk like, man, what, what, where, where am I at? What do I need to work? You know, what's my prescription? You know, you go to the doc, you get a prescription, right? He gives you the prescription. You take the prescription. You feel better. You don't, then it's probably going to linger, right? The problem is going to keep lingering. It's no different. He came and we talked about some of his prescriptions, some of the things that he can work on to get better at. And he's eager to get that information because he wants to elevate his game. And, um, you know, that's why I, I love having him here and really like working with him. Man, what an unbelievable room you do have. What about Joe Bocci? Another guy that's uh he's all about team. That dude, he's uh he is totally selfless, isn't he? No question. I mean, you look back to 2021, the games he went in and played when guys were hurt, the San Francisco games, the one that pops off of my mind. Uh he played lights out in that game. I know we, you know, I was in San Francisco, so I was on the winning side of that one, but we, we didn't, we ended up winning that game here. And uh, Joe comes in and plays lights out in, in his snaps and, um, you know, come has come off of a tough injury to get to where he's at right now, but tireless worker has prepared. And, you know, he had that like year and a half stretch where he felt like, man, all I'm doing in the off season season is rehabbing. And this off season was really his first true off season to just go and work on getting better and not just rehabbing. And I was excited for him to have that. And you really see it each week uh, during training camp, his game, he got a little bit better and a little bit better and improved, improved. And, um, you know, he's going to be a core contributor with our teams and he's going to be, you know, awesome guy to have in our room is a guy that'll go in and roll position and uh, make plays for us when he does. Coach, it's amazing. We talk about the three down aspect of it. I mean, in, in today's football, you, your base defense is a nickel now, you know, four, two, five, two linebackers, nickel, deep, nickel uh, slot corner with the two outside corners and the safeties in the back end. Um, that's that's it. a lot of teams. That's their their base defense, the way these offenses have evolved, spreading the field out and all that. But when teams do like Cleveland will decide, OK, we got a big, powerful offensive line. We got tight end. We got Chubb. We're going to try to, you know, knock you around a little bit. The fact that you, you're you so versatile and flexible from a skill set standpoint at the linebacker position, how good is that? Yeah, I, I think that that certainly helps to have guys that can go in in certain packages and do very specific things against very specific things you're anticipating from an offense, whether it's Cleveland or, you know, Baltimore, or whoever that might be down the road. Um, <clears throat> I think that – you said it. I, I know even looking back to the first time I called a game, I guess back in 2014, it was, you know, very different offensively. And then the last 10 years of this league, you've seen this shift and change to where, you know, even putting bigger people on the field offensively, but they still give you the small looking formations, still try to spread you out. Right. And um, so to have linebackers that could go in and to your point, be able to play in big box type situations, but then the very next snap, the offensive personnel makes the box little. So those guys now have to go out and play and cover and manipulate in space and the flexibility of the player to be able to do that is, is like paramount right now in this league. Really is, I guess. And then coach, maybe a couple of uh, comments about a couple of guys that uh, you got on the practice squad that you're maybe going to try to develop a little bit uh, guys that you might have your eye on that you can, make uh enhanced durability in their NFL career? 
Yeah, you know, Tyler and Shaka both are yep. guys that, that, you know, we have here on our P-Squad right now. And it's actually the two guys I was kind of alluding to earlier. We had a good talk about their moment right now is not waiting their turn. It's about elevating their game. Yep. And um, I'm excited about both of these guys. I think they have some intangible pieces that um, if we just have some time, time in with them and really, more importantly, time and energy in with them um, that we can um, – help them grow and help them develop. And, you know, as you know, and everybody knows at some point in time of the season, could be week one, you don't know. One of those guys will get a hat and be involved on special teams and be a backup as a linebacker. That's that's what happens. Um, someone may go down at some point in time. And that's why we're on the process of we're trying to get better right now. We're not trying to get better for week two. We're trying to get better for right now. And um, I think both of those guys have some, fun tools that that'll be work, you know, that are going to be fun working with them and developing and continue to grow with some extra time in. I think, uh, and finally coach the defensive coaching staff. I mean, it, it's a hell of a group and it's, it's, there are some young, young, uh, coaches that are, are developing, you know, in their careers, you know, I mean, uh, and then there are, are some coaches like yourself. There's been a defensive coordinator at a couple of different franchises, uh, like Mark Duffner has been a coordinator and a head coach, you know, and he's he's on the defensive staff. You have all you have a a, a varied uh, laundry list of, of of experiences and uh, everything that that you can everybody can put into one big pot, and and it it's really special uh, the way you guys work together and and the product that goes out in the football field defensively. I know the players think uh, the Bengals coaching staff on the defensive side of the football is as good as there is in the league, man. Yeah, it's it's an awesome staff to work on. And it's um, in, you know, it starts at the top. It starts with the lose mindset and the way he puts it all together. You know, he's, he's so of the mindset. It's not about being right. It's about getting it right. And when you have that kind of leading you and that mm -hmm. over you, then all of a sudden the ideas come in. Then I think what our staff does a really good job of is like we keep the ideas on the train tracks, you know, like yep. we try not to be something we're not. We try not to be over here to be over there, but also at the same time present issues for for offenses the best we can, and also and probably more importantly is put our players in the best position. Everybody kind of has that in mind. Um, it's very egoless in our room. It's very you know fact about trying to do something that's going to help us and help our players, um, so they can go out and play at a high level and play to their ability level. Um, but I think it's 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 a special staff that way for sure. Good guys, really good guys. As are you, Coach. And it was a, a pleasure this morning to talk football and life. I mean, man, I, I could uh, you're you you've got it you've got it together, Coach. I mean, I can see why players love playing for you, man. They're they're gonna they're gonna learn not only about football, but there's lessons in life that come along with learning about that football for sure. For sure, for sure. Well, for I'm blessed sure. to be here. This is. You know, the fifth place I've worked at in the National Football League, and it's a very special place to us. Um, we love this franchise. My family loves this community. My kids love their schools. And, you know, I know the Betcher family couldn't be happier to be anywhere else in the country than right here. That's awesome. Thanks for your time. I know it's busy. Good luck in that uh, opener down the road here coming up quick against the Browns. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.